Hello guys, Fenix here with TGN.TV and in this tutorial episode we are going to be covering Cinema 4D and we're actually going to be covering something called Dynamics. So if you are new to Cinema 4D then unfortunately you might not be able to follow along with this tutorial. So it's kind of uh, um, an advanced intermediate type of tutorial uh, because it uses aspects of Cinema 4D that are quite complex such as Dynamics. Um, but if you know about Dynamics and Cinema 4D in general, you've been using it for a few months, you should be fine. Um, if you do want to see more basic tutorials of Cinema 4D, then please leave a comment and we'll go from there. So, this is what we're going to be creating. It's going to be a wrecking ball and it's going to have a chain and it's going to have a big ball on the end. And it's attached to um, a solid object that will basically hold the chain and ball up. Um, you know, such as like a crane, but in our case, because it's just an example, it's, you know, just uh, a torus that's holding it up. Now, when we actually do this, um, I will be trying to explain things to the best of my ability. This is probably my second tutorial that I have actually ever created, so please bear with me, um, and hopefully we will get through it quite quickly. So, let's start. So, this is Cinema 4D R13 which you need R12 or above to actually complete your tutorial successfully. Um, there might be other methods to do what I'm about to do, but I don't know them because I started using Cinema 4D when um, R12 was just about to come out. So, um, let's start off with the chain link. So, we want to create a spline. We want to create a rectangular spline. We want to create a circular spline. Now, we want to create a sweep nerves. So if we go to our sweep nerves and hit sweep nerves. So what our sweep nerves does is it will basically take the first child and sweep it around the second child. Now, if you don't know what the child system is, um, it's in a lot of applications such as After Effects. Um, Cinema 4D uses it a lot and it's, it's like, it's very, um, is it very independent about what you want to do? Um, the order has to be in certain orders. If not, you get different results. Such as, I, t I want to tell the sweep nerves to take the circle and wrap it around the rectangle. And it's going to do that for me. Now, it does look a bit square because of the rounding. So if we enable rounding on the rectangle and increase this to the maximum amount, we see we're going to get kind of a, a, a torus shape or a donut shape. Now, obviously, this looks really weird. Uh, this is all down to the size. So, let's just change the order and see what happens. So, as you can see, it does kind of look similar, but we've got like um, a banding in, in the middle and at the front here. So, if we just reduce the sizes of these, you can see that we actually get something that looks more like a tire now, which is quite cool. So, you know, you can make some cool effects with it. You know, we've got a washer, um, such as um, something that you put on, um, what you got, like um, on a bike or something. So we got like one of them washers, if you know what I mean. Um, but we actually want this to be a circle. So we need to enable the um, rounding again. We have to basically increase it. And we want to reduce the size of the circle because it's way too big. So we want to make this one centimeter. And as you can see, if we zoom in, We've got this shape. Now, of course, we want it to be in a link type shape. So I'm going to reduce the width to 10 and the height to 18. And I'm going to put the radius of the rounding up to the max, which is 5 centimeters. And this is going to create a quite nice chain link. Now, of course, you can make any chain link you want. You can, you know, have it like this. You can have it like this. You can have whatever you want. But for this tutorial purposes, I'm going to have um, 10 and 18 and the maximum amount of radius. So now that we have our first chain link done, we're going to rename this to chain link sweep. And as you can see, when we select it, there is a crap load of polygons. And this is really bad because we're not optimizing as we're basically working. And it's going to save a lot of time when you actually optimize as you are working rather than working, finishing, then optimizing, especially when it comes to rendering out um, the dynamics because they are extremely slow because there's a lot of calculations that um, has to be calculated. So I'm, click on, I'm going to click on the circle spline and I'm going to change the intermediate points from adaptive to uniform. 
And what uniform does, if I just go to display and turn on the lines, you will see that if I reduce the number to zero, we've got a really bulky shape. That could be cool. But we want it to be rather smooth. So I'm going to increase this until I see something that looks relatively smooth. And I believe that looks really smooth. So from the amount of polygons we had when it was up at 8 to the ones that we have now down at 2, it's a big difference and it still has the same smoothness. So be very careful when you're actually um, doing this because the less polygons the better, but you still want to keep you know the higher detail as possible. So for the rectangular mode, um, we are going to basically um, keep it on adaptive and we are going to increase the angle. Now, when you increase the angle on adaptive, the less polygons you get. Kind of weird, I know, but just bear with it. Um, it's the way it works. Um, so basically, I'm going to put this up to maybe 12 and render. So you see, we're getting some jagged edges, but that's okay. Why? Because we are going to be doing a long distance shot, such as something like this because the ball on the end is going to be 10 times the size of a chain link. So when we render out, see, you can't even tell that it's jagged. But of course, if we're going to go in for a really, really um, close up, then of course you would want to um, increase, uh, well, decrease the angle of uh, the adaptive intermediate steps. So, but of course, because this is tutorial, I'm going to keep it on 12. And there we go. So now we need to create more chain links. Now the easiest way to do that is if I click on my chain link sweep and hold the alt on my keyboard and go to MoGraph and click cloner, that's automatically going to make the chain link sweep a child of my clone object. So as you can see, we have three links because the count is set to three. So let's increase this to, let's just say 10 for tutorial purposes, because uh, obviously when you're doing a tutorial, you want to keep it down as possible, um, you know, the number down as low as possible, so you can actually work effectively um, and quickly. <laughs> so, we need to reduce the Y spacing, and we need them to intersect, so something like this would be okay. So, let's just see, we've got 15, so let's put it to an even number, so I'm going to go 14. And the reason I've done that is just because I like to work in even numbers. <laughs> So now we need to tell the clone object that we want every other step in this chain link to actually be rotated. And the way we do that is by changing the step rotation H. So if we turn, change this to 90, you will see that every other link is changed to 90. And that is how you create a basic chain link. So if we hit render, there we go. Now that we've got our chain link, we're just going to rename this to chain link so we know what we are doing. And I'm going to close out. The next thing we need is something for the chain link to hook onto, to be supported. And I'm going to make a torus because it's the most logical one for me to use. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And I'm going to move it up. And I'm paying attention to the axis because this is where it's going to scale to. And I'm going to reduce the segment count to 8 because we don't need a lot of geometry. And I'm going to reduce the radius to something like, let's try 4. And then I'm going to reduce the size. And the lower it gets, obviously the thicker it gets. I'm going to move this up a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to reduce the, the, um, the pipe radius to maybe 2. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, I think we'll leave it at that. So now that we've got that, uh, I'm going to rename this to um, Taurus Hook. Just so we know that it's a hook and it's going to be staying there. So what we need now is we actually need the wrecking ball to go on the end. Now this can be any object you want, but obviously for tutorial purposes, I'm going to keep it as uh, a sphere. Uh, so I'm going to bring this down in position, which is going to be around there. Now I'm going to increase the number of segments in this. I'm going to make it 48, which is just double of what we originally had. And there we go. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? So what we need to do now is we need something to hook these together. 